Hello, it's me, Yvonne, your local non-binary witch, and I want to talk about civilization and its discontents. So, um, as a pagan, um, I am deeply suspicious of the whole concept of civilization. Obviously, when we say civilized, we mean, you know, ask questions before committing violence and stuff like that. Um, but unfortunately, um, the whole concept of civilization has been used uh, to justify the removal and slaughter of indigenous peoples, including ancient pagans of Europe, uh, because Christianity was, um, you know, fancied itself as kind of urbane and civilized. And um, despite the fact that they went around slaughtering and, you know, slaughtering ancient pagans uh, in, especially in the Baltic region, uh, did you know that the entire pagan population of old Prussia was wiped out and replaced with Teutonic Knights? Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of really bad stuff that happened, uh, like the time that King Olaf of Norway decided he was going to round up all the uh, Urgi men um, and Sathra men and drown them in a fjord um, by waiting till the tide came in and drowned them. So yeah, um, yes, civilization is not all it's cracked up to be. Uh, now, civilization appears to have arisen um, about 6,000 years ago uh, because uh, farming got going. Now, the interesting thing about farming is that it's not actually the most efficient way to manage your food supply because you have to put in an awful lot of backbreaking effort to get the plants to grow on your piece of farmed land and then once you've used that piece of land for a couple of generations, it then becomes exhausted. Uh, whereas if you look at hunter gathering, hunter gathering is a much more efficient way of getting food because you have to spend about two hours a day hunting or fishing or gathering. Uh, and then you get to kick back and relax, which sounds great. Um, so uh, the other thing about hunter gatherer is hunter gatherers don't actually move on. Farmers move on to a new region because they exhaust the soil in the bit where or they you know they either exhaust the soil on the bit where they are or um the farm has to be subdivided and then it becomes unviable as an economic unit so their offspring have to move on somewhere else um now i got some of these ideas from robert sawyer um the excellent trilogy by robert sawyer called um the neanderthal trilogy which um is the individual books are um uh hominids humans and hybrids he likes titles that alliterate um but these are fairly common ideas about how hunter gathering is much better for the earth than farming so if you look at indigenous peoples they tend to stay put in a specific region and the reason for that is because they know all the plants, all the medicinal plants, all the food plants, where they grow, and uh, where they can find the different animals in that region. And they also know that because they're not going to move on from that one region, they're not going to um, hunt or fish to exhaust, so as to exhaust the fishing supplies. Like the, uh, we learned from a documentary on TVO the other day that the Sogin Ojibwe, uh, when they would go to where the fish, the fish spawning grounds, and then they would pick the fish out of the water because there were so many fish that they could do that. And before they put them in their basket to take away and eat, they would squeeze the eggs and the sperm out of the fish back into the water to make sure that there would be fish stocks for the next time. Now, in the 1830s, capitalists colonialist exploiters arrived and basically almost exhausted the fish stocks in that area of Lake Huron um, because they didn't have that principle of we have to make this last, this resource last um, and we have to be in right relationship with the earth because they were capitalists and capitalists are exploiting, exploitative, right? So this leads me on to another important thing which is that um, 
80% of the world's biodiversity is in areas that are protected and managed by Indigenous peoples. So when you hear this thing about, we have to give over half of nature to, to nature to look after itself. No, that's not how it works. The best areas of biodiversity are those which are managed by Indigenous peoples who have lived on that land for millennia, know how to take care of it and relate to it and work with it. So any new deal for nature or anything like that must take into account the rights of Indigenous peoples to stay on that land that they have worked with for millennia because they are the thing, they are the they are responsible for why it is so um, fertile and biodiverse in the first place, right? If you don't believe me, there's a UN report on this very subject. Um, so uh, hunter gathering is actually more civilized than farming, um, which tends to exhaust the land it's on. Um, and also uh, hunter gatherers, have had cities and um, the like, because there was a huge indigenous city in Cahokia in, uh, in Ohio, and there were other indigenous cities. There was also, during the Neolithic period, there was a massive city right in the middle of the steppes in Siberia. So there, you, know, you can have cities and hunter gathering. Um, but anyway, you, you know, cities on although the word civilization means bringing having cities um cities are not the be all and end all of existence for the simple reason that um there's a group of people who are doing other activities than producing food and so they have to be supported by the surrounding farmland unless of course you are a hunter-gatherer system where like everybody only has to do two hours a day of actual food food acquisition and then they've got time to do other things which are more creative so this is why hunter gathering is inherently superior and we should all learn from indigenous peoples so there you go if you want to find out more uh, check out survival international and the cultural survival which are two really important organizations that um that act to promote the indigenous worldview uh, and the indigenous worldview is quite similar to the pagan worldview and um, the pagan worldview is also derived in large part from a hunter-gatherer perspective although there's clearly um, agricultural overlays on pagan thought um, so anyway um, it's not that we're appropriating indigenous worldviews it's just that you know they are very similar because they both come from the earth. So um, let's stand up for the rights uh, of our indigenous um, relations and take care of it there. I'm Blissibi.